I want to say number one, it doesn't matter that I didn't know that I was being live streamed or whatever. Uh, you should be the same person in private as in public and I always call for civility and being nice and I wasn't being very nice. Uh, it's a bit embarrassing of course because I never swear and that's probably the rudest word I've ever said. So to get caught up on that is not much fun, uh, though I'm sure many people uh, have called me that name many, many, many times. Uh, but I'm sorry about that. That wasn't right, it wasn't fair, it wasn't nice and it wasn't civil. I'm a better person than that and I should be better than that. On the second question of what the city does or does not do, you know, I think most citizens would expect that the regulator regulates and that we don't just come up with policy prescriptions on what we think a background check should be out of thin air. We actually have to figure out what works and what doesn't work. Um, that said, uh, you know, I have said before uh, many times that we know anecdotally that someone made it through the process uh, who had a criminal conviction. And I think Calgarians deserve to know that. And if I made, and I did make, um, I, I, I made allegations that it went further than that, and that's not fair, that's not right. The limit of my knowledge is the limit of what I've already told the public, which is that we know anecdotally that someone slipped through. And I'm very sorry that I made it sound like there was a lot more to it than that. But we've said from the very beginning that there were two concerns about Uber's background check process. Concern number one is that it didn't necessarily check registered sex offenders. And concern number two was that people with convictions might slip through that process. And I was referring to both of those things and I did so very, very badly and I confused them.